friends, Obanner here, uh, doing a video that I've been meaning to do for some time now, which is a uh, an overview of all of the clocks that I have in my apartment as of today. Uh, so we have uh, set all of the clocks so that they are going to chime four o'clock, uh, which makes it a little faster and easier to show all of them without taking forever in a day to do so. So without further ado, let's start our tour with my cuckoo and quail clock. <clears throat> so this clock uh, was presumably of German manufacture. We actually know very little about it. Um, we think it might be late 19th century, maybe early 20th century. Uh, it has two birds, a cuckoo and a quail. The quail comes out every quarter hour uh, and chimes the number of quarters. And then the cuckoo comes out on the hour and strikes the number of hours. So uh, you will hear four quail squawks followed by the number of hours. my only mental clock that chimes only on the, uh, well, not even chimes, it gongs on the half hour and the number of hours. Uh, this is a 1904 uh, striking mental clock made by the Amsonia Clock Company of New York. Uh, it is known as the Pulford Striker and it strikes the half hours and the number of hours on a coiled gong. Okay. Next up on our list is <clears throat> my only chiming wall clock. Uh, and this is a clock by the new Ansonia Clock Company out of Washington State. Uh, the original Hansonia Clock Company folded sometime in the 1940s, I believe. And then a few years later, uh, a new company basically bought the name and the rights and the patents uh, of the original Hansonia Company and became the new Hansonia Clock Company. This clock is known as a gold medallion wall clock. It was made in 1985. And it is what we call a triple chimer clock. It has three different chime settings, Westminster, St. Michael's, and Weddington. For the sake of this demonstration, we will play for you the Weddington chime. That is the Amsonia wall chimer. <clears throat> Next on our list is uh, a mantel clock uh, made by the Seth Thomas Company out of Connecticut. Uh, this, uh, the Seth Thomas Company was uh, one of the, the many, many uh, clockmakers that uh, were based in Connecticut during the 19th and early 20th centuries. This clock is known as a Seth Thomas Sonora Chime Clock. And uh, the reason for that is that uh, there was once a company called Sonora, which I believe made music boxes. Um, and Seth Thomas at some point acquired their, their movement and integrated it into their own clocks. 
So essentially you have two movements that sort of work very nicely together and uh, produce uh, uh, Westminster chimes. Uh, another unique feature of this clock is that the chimes are played on bells as opposed to chime rods, like most of my other clocks. So enjoy the Seth Thomas Sonora. Next is one of my favorite clocks. This one was made by the Hamburg American Clock Company out of Germany sometime in 1927 or 1928. Uh, these clocks are known as the Celebrate Chiming Clock. They were made for a New York based uh, distributor of clocks and jewelry and such uh, known as George Borkfeld. Uh, these are really high-end clocks, spectacular chiming uh, quality. This one is a Westminster only. They also made a model that was a dual chimer, played Westminster and another chime known as Trinity. Uh, I have a clock that uh, is of, of that uh, model. I will show it off to you once it is repaired. But for now, enjoy this absolutely wonderful Westminster Hamburg American Clock Celebrate. Further down on that shelf, we have an American mental clock, a uh, tambour style clock, as was the one before it, uh, made by the Hershey Hall Clock Company out of Ohio, uh, also sometime probably around 1927. Uh, this is a dual chime clock, it chimes Westminster and Canterbury chimes on absolutely wonderfully tuned chime rods. Uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, you will hear the Canterbury chimes. So that's a Hershey. Next up is my only foray into electric clocks. Uh, this clock is a General Electric uh, model 220, uh, sorry, model 426 clock, uh, made sometime in the 1950s, maybe mid 1950s. This is a, also a Westminster chime clock, but unlike the others, which are uh, spring-driven and uh, pendulum-driven pendulum, uh, pendulum -driven clocks, this is electric. I'm going to have to uh, get in there and plug it in. And then this clock has to be um, advanced by a knob on the back. So I'm going to do that.
and that is the General Electric clock. Uh, finally, to conclude the tour of working John clocks, here is what's probably my best looking clock of, of the bunch. Of course, uh, you, you folks decide. This is made by a company known as Junghans, uh, based out of Germany. This particular clock had a date code on the movement of B20, uh, which means that it was made sometime during the later half of 1920. Um, it is a Westminster chiming clock, but has a feature that most other Westminster chimers don't, in that the Westminster chime melody is played on chime rods. However, the hour strike is struck on a rather massive coiled gong. And that is the Young Hans B20 clock. As a side note, it is worth pointing out that I have another clock by uh, the Young Hans company, uh, which is currently not functioning, sadly. Um, it is the clock, the first clock I ever picked up, um, but un unfortunately, its chiming mechanism is is not functioning as it should. However, I'm hoping that at some point in the uh, not too distant future I can get it repaired and then it'll be chiming along all its fellows. Well folks, that's that for my clock review, uh, clock uh, overview I should say. Thanks for watching and I hope you have enjoyed all the different clocks and their personalities. Take care.